as the 28th president of St. Joseph's University. We will now pause for the national anthem to be sung by Courtney Allen, class of 2016. And at that conclusion, please remain standing for the posting of the colors. National anthem. <laughs> I certainly want to thank Ms. Allen for the National Anthem. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Dr. Reed, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished guests, alumni, esteemed faculty and staff, ladies and gentlemen, I officially convene the inauguration, commissioning, and installation of Mark C. Reed, EDD, as the 28th president of this wonderful St. Joseph's University. We will now have an invitation offered by the Reverend Nicholas S. Rasher and the Society of Jesus, St. Joseph's 25th president and our university professor, Father Rasher. Let us all our heads to pray. May this year new work as president of St. Joseph's University excite your heart and kindle in your mind a creativity that journeys beyond all expectations. May your leadership challenge us towards the birth of new works that will emerge at St. Joseph's as you begin to initiate them. May they call forth from you the full force and depth of your innovation ideals, while opening vistas that have remained undiscovered in us. May you discern the will of God for and with us. May the work of present fit your soul, enabling you to draw us to an intellectual postulate of the 21st century, 
that is a Catholic Jesuit university. May you lead us to live that intellectual apostolate with a love of service and care for the poor and forgotten as called for by our Holy Father, Pope Francis. May these works be worthy of the energy of our hearts and the light of our thoughts. May your leadership of these works assume a proper fullness in your life as husband, father, and Jesuit University president. May this work challenge and uplift you, bringing you every day further into the wonder of his will. We ask this for God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
You are welcome to apply after each one. Applaud it. Now, to offer greetings on behalf of the Jesuit community, your Reverend Brandon G. Lally of the Society of Jesus and Rector of the Jesuit community here at St. Joseph's. Father Lally, would you As we begin the 165th year in the life of St. Joseph's University, we call to mind the journey of faith and scholarship, friendship, and service we have been on. Our faith rooted in the saving love of Jesus Christ, a faith that is Catholic and fashioned in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, that has been transmitted through the inspiration of St. Ignatius Loyola, founder of the Society of Jesus, especially through the dynamics of the spiritual exercises, where for over four and a half centuries, men and women have heard the call of their king to a change of heart that has enabled in them a desire to seek God in all things. Today, Dr. Mark Reed, the Jesuit community of St. Joseph's University shares in the delight of the whole university community in your inauguration as our 28th president. You have already been in the Jesuit family for many years, and we know well of your deep commitment to the Ignatian character of our educational enterprise, which seeks to inspire the Majus in every aspect of its life, and to form men and women for others who have an appreciation for the diverse reality of our world, but also the inspiration to commend all their choices to the greater honor and glory of God, and to find a solidarity rooted in faith that will build bridges of understanding and hope in a troubled world. We ask you to continue to grow that Catholic and Jesuit character of our university after the heart of St. Ignatius, seeking academic excellence, the commitment to service, and the faith that does justice. Dr. Reed, we invite you to know of our wholehearted support for you as you take up the leadership of St. Joseph's University. We encourage you to hold in mind and heart that our work here and decisions that need to be made will only be successful if they find their origin in prayer and in the promptings of the Holy Spirit. In an address on education, Pope Francis said that following what St. Ignatius teaches us, the main element in school is learning to be magnanimous. He continued, this means having a big heart, having a greatness of soul. It means having grand ideals, the desire to achieve great things in response to what God asks of us. And precisely because of this, doing everyday things, all our daily actions, commitments, and meetings with people well. It means, therefore, doing the little everyday things with a big heart that is open to God and to others. Dr. Reed, may God give you the grace you need to accomplish his purpose in this spirit. In all the great and small decisions each day, and to do always everything looking to God's greater honor and glory. Welcome and congratulations. It's now my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Robert P. Casey, United States Senator, representing Pennsylvania. Please come forward. 
Thank you very much and good morning. Your Excellency Archbishop Chaput, the entire St. Joe's University family, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here as is my wife, Therese, as uh, graduates of a, another Jesuit college, Holy Cross, a number of years ago. But we're also honored to be here in, a, in an even more personal way to witness this ceremony on behalf of the inauguration of Dr. Reed. My oldest, our oldest daughter, Elise, was a 2011 graduate. My sister is a 1979 graduate. We've got uh, Nora Breyer, Bob Breyer as graduates, and now currently Genevieve Philbin and Aileen Breyer are both seniors. So we have a personal stake in St. Joe's and we're honored to be part of this ceremony. Dr. Reed, I don't have uh, any words of wisdom or instruction. I just, we just have hopes and prayers today for your leadership. First and foremost, as a representative of our state, I want to welcome you back to Pennsylvania. We're honored that you're, you're back here with us. We also uh, pray for your, your work, really your ministry, uh, to lead this university and to, as we were taught many years ago, do everything we can uh, to follow the uh, direction and guidance of Jesuits to teach us to be men and women for others. Uh, we're grateful uh, for your leadership. We're grateful for your willingness to take on uh, this assignment. And we, of course, welcome you back to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Casey. Appreciate that very much. Appreciate you being here as well. We now have Councilman Curtis Jones, who is going to bring greetings on behalf of the wonderful Philadelphia City Council, would you please come forward? I'm not as tall as the senator. <laughs> Dr. Reed, I had an opportunity to meet him, but today I shared a brief table with his in-laws. Uh, and it's important, Doctor, to know that they are very proud of you today. And you are a wise man to me. Your in-laws proud of you. <laughs> but on, on behalf of the mayor of the city of Philadelphia, the city council as a body, we welcome you back to the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection as the president of this university. You are, as you know, in the fourth councilmanic district, which is the district I represent and represent the students here. And we are so very happy to welcome you back. One of the conversations at the table was the transformation of young people and young minds in the adolescent period uh, and the transition they go through. And it is good to know, Doctor, that you will be at the head of that transition for them to go from optimistic young people to purpose adults. And we welcome the partnership with the city of Philadelphia to help you through that transition. Welcome back. for others, and work for the greater good. 
We share a passion for our history, take great pride in our alma mater's achievements, and look forward to the future with great anticipation. I'm sure you have already witnessed the great love your alumni share with the university. It is a special place. It is our duty to perpetuate this generation of folks to come, and for this to happen, engagement with alumni and students, our future alumni, is the key. To that end, the Mass Alumni Board has undertaken numerous initiatives to work with, mentor, and encourage interaction among students, alumni, and the university. Our efforts have brought great bounty, and yet there is much work to be done. We look forward to your presidency, Dr. Reed, and pledge to you our full and unwavering support. May our patron, St. Joseph, and Almighty God, bless you in your mission. The hawk will never die. Aprender de usted y prosperar para su liderazgo. 
Y en los eventos deportivos espero poder entrar junto a usted en la gloria jamás morirá. Doctor Reed, los estudiantes de St. Joseph's le damos la bienvenida a usted y a su familia, a nuestra comunidad universitaria, y les deseamos salud y felicidad en su nueva posición.
能与您肩并肩，一起高声呐喊的神鹰永不死。马克·里德博士，圣约瑟夫大学的全体学生，欢迎您及您的家人来到我们学校为大家腾空，也祝愿您在新的岗位上身体健康，生活幸福。谢谢 ，Thank you。
I'd like to welcome you back to Philadelphia and to Hawk Hill, and perhaps most of all, to welcome you to your new home. Congratulations on your installation as the 20th president of St. Joseph's University. someone bringing greetings from our faculty and I, I want the faculty out there to know how proud I am to be a part of this incredible faculty and uh, of course you saw the results with uh, our wonderful students. So on behalf of the faculty we have the president of the faculty senate Dr. Ann Green. She's a professor of English and she will bring greetings of course to Dr. Reed on behalf of the faculty. Dr. Green. I know I'm supposed to work off the book, but I was editing even this morning. The hazards of being an English teacher. <laughs> As president of the Faculty Senate, and on behalf of the Faculty of St. Joseph's University, I extend to you, Dr. Mark Reed, our 28th president, a warm and enthusiastic welcome. As our first lay president, the faculty wish particularly welcome you to Philadelphia's Jesuit University. We are, to borrow a phrase from the Reverend Peter Hans Goldenbach, a composition of our time and place. We are both the birthplace of U.S. democracy and the home to fiercely loyal hawks. We combine Philadelphia's historic commitment to independence and revolution with the Jesuits' commitment to the faith that does justice. We welcome a leader who can be both an intellectual visionary and a strategic planner. We welcome the opportunity to work with you to sustain and enhance St. Joseph's commitment to the Jesuit values of Cura Personalis and Mattis. As faculty, we often reflect on what it means to encourage and promote the Magis. I often think of the Magis as being a little like a guy named Dumbledore's words to a kid named Harry Potter. In the Chamber of Secrets, Dumbledore advises Harry that it is our choices that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. The Magus, too, is about our choices. While it is often translated as simply the more, it is about more than more. Superior General of Society, Jesus Father Pedro Arupe, first used the Magus and linked it explicitly to the Jesuit maxim for the greater glory of God. To engage in the magis is not to embrace the secular values of more stuff or more money. It is not to be busier or necessarily to do more, but to seek God's grace while discerning the best option among the many good options. We do not achieve the magis when we work for our own individual gains, but rather when we strive for the best option for our students for the greater good and the greater glory of God. As I wrote this introduction, I reached out to alums on my Facebook page to hear their thoughts on the Magus and how it affects their lives and work. I got many wonderful responses. Our recent graduates are doing the Jesuit Volunteer Corps in Houston and Detroit, in Montana and Alaska, and many other places. Others are building stoves in Guatemala, doing peace work in Northern Ireland, teaching high school in Philadelphia, advocating for the poor in Washington, and working to end the social sin of racism. They are donating restaurants to adopted mothers, adopting children, raising children, homeschooling children, and earning advanced degrees in fields as varied as medicine and library science, as social work and business. They are setting the world on fire. If, as Father Kohlenbach writes, the real measure of our Jesuit universities lies in who our students become. The faculty and staff at St. Joseph's are extraordinarily blessed by who our students are and what they achieve. I have no doubt that some of you who are still students will someday, and it will be sooner than you think, message me as you decide between one extraordinary opportunity and another or write on my wall about your accomplishments and your struggles. We welcome you, Mark Reed, to an extraordinary place at an extraordinary moment 
where there are many opportunities to choose between the many goods of this faculty, this staff, these students, and this extraordinary Philadelphia community. St. Joseph's University for the privilege of offering greetings from the Academy on the occasion of Mark Reed's inauguration as the 28th president of this university. I speak first on behalf of the delegates of the American Colleges and Universities, my colleagues gathered here before us. But I speak as well on behalf of the thousands of other colleges and universities that make up American higher education, many of whom have sent greetings for this occasion. The great genius and distinction of American higher education is its variety and diversity. And St. Joseph's takes its place within the fabric of that rich diversity as an institution that is uniquely and characteristically itself. Not Penn, not Villanova, not Fairfield, but St. Joseph's. One of Dr. Reed's challenges in the years ahead will be to articulate just what that identity is and to help the members of this community to live it out. I bring greetings as well <clears throat> on behalf of the community of Jesuit and Catholic universities particularly on behalf of the AJCU, the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities, and the ACCU, the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities in the United States. In both, Mark, you will find wonderful colleagues who will be eager to be helpful to you. For the first couple of meetings of the AJCU, May I suggest that you sit next to me, and I will signal you when it's appropriate for you as a new boy on the block to open your mouth, <laughs> and where I can kick you under the table when you should keep your mouth shut. <laughs> on a solemn occasion like a convocation to inaugurate a new president, and surrounded as we are by the symbols and garb of centuries past, as a historian, I am conscious of welcoming you, Mark, into a tradition of university education that dates back almost a millennium. The university was born, as our late Holy Father, John Paul II, sought to remind us in his encyclical Excorde Ecclesiae, from the heart of the church. Those medieval universities strove for the integration of faith and reason, he has Quarren's intellectum, at the same time that they jealously guarded their independence and autonomy. Our own Jesuit schools grew alongside the great universities of the time, much influenced by Renaissance humanism with a more holistic view of education, which included the formation of the whole person for the service of the church and the community. That view of education as moral, religious, and civic formation found its way into the American colonial colleges 
and is still present in the DNA of institutions like St. Joseph's. With the overlay of the research agenda of 19th century German universities, present in the research one institutions where most of our faculty have been trained, you have some sense of the rich complexity of the traditions you have inherited as leader of an American Jesuit university. Your challenge will be to keep these traditions in balance or more accurately in creative tension. And all of this says nothing about how you will need to do this while adapting to the challenges of disruptive technologies and a business model now notoriously considered to be broken. Good luck with that. <laughs> Finally, I want to welcome you into this job for the wonderful opportunities it will present you to realize the ideals of American Jesuit higher education. Despite the criticism of higher education today, many of which we must humbly acknowledge, despite the challenges, financial and otherwise, that face our institutions, being president of a university, I have to say, is still a great job. It gives you the opportunity to build a team that will ensure the sustainability and flourishing of the institution. It gives you the opportunity to facilitate the great work of scholars, teachers, and dedicated professionals on your faculty and staff. It gives you the tremendous satisfaction of seeing young men and women arrive as adolescents and graduate as persons of competence, commitment, and compassion and your graduate students to become professionals committed to social justice and the common good. And if I may conclude in the Ignatian language that I know we both share, this job will give you the satisfaction of doing something that is both God's will for you and the deepest desire of your own heart, which are, as you know, in the Jesuit way of looking at things, the same thing. God bless you, Mark, and the work you're going to take. Thank you. 
And of course, you do not bear this responsibility alone. The 35th General Congregation of the Society of Jesus speaks of collaboration among all our colleagues, Jesuit and lay, as at the heart of our mission. In the formal memorandum of understanding, the Maryland province, uh, the St. Joseph's University Jesuit community, and the University Board of Trustees together pledge our shared responsibility and commitment for the Catholic and Jesuit mission of this university. And in fact, the entire St. Joseph's University family shares the privilege and the responsibility to preserve and enhance this mission. And so I charge you, Dr. Reed, as the 28th University President and Director of this Jesuit work, to shepherd well the Society's apostolate, to remember always the Society's commitment to the service of faith and the promotion of justice, and to sustain and enhance the Catholic and Jesuit identity of this university. I entrust you, therefore, the presidency of St. Joseph's University. May God bless you abundantly in your new mission.
On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I welcome you as the 28th President of St. Joseph University. I assure you of our confidence in you and pledge our support as you lead this university for many years into the future. In my remarks at last April's announcement of my appointment as president, I shared that my overwhelming feeling at that time was one of gratitude. And I acknowledged the many people and opportunities that led me to that important moment in my life. Now, not surprisingly, I have that same overwhelming feeling of gratitude today. This time, however, my gratitude is principally for St. Joseph's University. It is a privilege and a blessing, truly a grace-filled moment in my life to be standing here today as the president of this historic, proud, and excellent Jesuit institution. We are grateful here today for the presence of all various parts of this community, faculty, students, and staff, alumni, trustees, and administrators, parents, benefactors, neighbors, and community partners, all reflecting the shared commitment to and the common purpose of St. Joseph's University. We welcome our colleagues from our sister Jesuit institutions in the city who are here with us in the audience, St. Joseph's Prep and Old St. Joseph's Church. We are honored by the presence of our Archbishop, most Reverend Charles Chaput, and the Provincial of the Maryland Province of the Society of Jesus, very Reverend Robert Dawson. We welcome presidents and delegates from other colleges and universities, both near and far, and many civic and elected officials, both on stage, thank you Senator Casey and Councilman Jones for being here, as well as several others in the audience. And colleagues and friends of mine from Fairfield University who never pass up an opportunity for a day away from the office, <laughs> and really just want to make sure that they are free of me at last. <laughs> Thank you all for honoring St. Joseph by being here today. I welcome my parents, my in-laws, my sister, and my uncle. Both my father and uncle are proud graduates of St. Joseph's. And I especially wish to acknowledge my wife, Kate. If there ever is an example of someone marrying outside of his league, <laughs> it is me. I still recall, as if it were yesterday, the day we met, and wondering if this beautiful woman was really talking to me. In those same remarks back in April, I shared one of my favorite quotes by Abraham Lincoln when he said that we must think anew and act anew. And Lincoln's words have been in the forefront of my mind since I arrived on campus two and a half months ago. I have found a near universal desire on the part of members of the university community to model Lincoln's wisdom. The challenge, of course, is moving from words to action, but I am confident that we are and will be doing more of just that. It occurred to me recently that perhaps having a modern day example to follow of someone who personifies thinking anew and acting anew might be helpful to St. Joseph's University as we not only promote the Majus, but seek it ourselves. Now where can we find such an example? Perhaps you are unaware, but did you know that Pope Francis is paying a visit next weekend to Philadelphia? <laughs> there hasn't been much attention paid to it, as there will be minimal disruption. So we will forgive you if this is news to you. The pending papal visit is extraordinarily exciting for our city and for St. Joseph's University. SJU's involvement in the planning and execution of the events is broad and deep, including the men and women 
leading the fundraising efforts to pay for all the associated costs of the visit and events. Our alumnus, the Austin Priest Father Bill Donovan, who is the principal liaison to the Vatican for the coordination of all aspects of the Pope's visit. Individuals who will personally greet and welcome the Pope when he arrives in Philadelphia. Members of our Jesuit community and faculty serving as commentators during the televised broadcasts of the Papal Mass and other news coverage leading up to the event. And hundreds of volunteers, yes, and this is important to note, more than any other organization or university in the area supporting and working at the events. More importantly for St. Joseph's, however, is the example of Pope Francis himself. If ever there were an example of someone thinking anew and acting anew, the Holy Father is it. And he does so influenced by and strongly reflect reflective of his own Jesuit education and formation. Additionally, Francis appears, at least to me anyway, to reject or despite the attempts to be typecast or forced into a set of only binary choices on many important topics and questions. Said another way, he is a leader who embodies symbolism, does nuance well, and is sincerely authentic. I posit that if he were not otherwise occupied leading the Roman Catholic Church, Francis would make one heck of a college president. Perhaps SJU should have attempted to hire him rather than me. So what does all of this mean for us as a St. Joseph's University community? In the interest of brevity and expediency, let me suggest three simple things. First, as we move forward as a university community, let's commit to following Francis's example individually and collectively. Second, we must challenge ourselves to be open to the possibilities, however energizing or unsettling, to which the examination of our individual and collective consciences can and will lead. Third, let's explore together key questions about our individual and collective motivations, pledge to approach institutional problems with a sense of personal detachment from the outcome, Asking primarily then, what is for the greater good of St. Joseph's University? And test our assumptions so that we do not confuse the means with the end. Let these three things be defining characteristics of SJU's culture and community. Let these be our way of proceeding. Over the past two and a half months, the most common question I have received from students, faculty, staff, and alumni has been, what are your impressions thus far? Well, I'll tell you. What I have observed and experienced firsthand is, is an incredibly loyal and proud alumni base who are leaders and doers in their chosen fields and communities. Faculty who are excellent in their fields, committed to being teacher scholars, and extremely dedicated to their students. Staff who care deeply about the university and want to do their part to help St. Joseph's achieve great things. A Jesuit community that has welcomed me with open arms and offered any and all support I could ever ask for. And students who are simultaneously serious about their studies, fun-loving, engaged in myriad ways across campus, and thoughtful about their future. I've learned about the wonderful and impressive work being done by several of our centers and institutes, including the Institute for Catholic Bioethics and the King Center for Autism Education and Support. Our business school continues to be ranked very highly overall, with exceptional rankings nationally for distinctive programs such as risk management and insurance, among others. Undergraduate enrollment today at St. Joseph stands at its second highest level in our history. Gifts to the university for the last year totaled over $15 million. The overall financial health of the university is strong. Certainly, we have challenges and opportunities, 
but I am fully confident in our ability to address and to capitalize on that. I said in April and I say it again. Together we will move this excellent university forward with optimism and aspiration, with realism and honesty, and always with a steadfast focus on our Jesuit mission, academic excellence, and the student experience. And let me end with a personal story. My first day in the office coincided with the final day of freshman orientation sessions during the summer. The upperclassmen serving as orientation leaders came over to Regis Hall, where my office is, for refreshments and conversation with me at the end of the day. They asked me to share a fun fact about myself, which orientation groups do as an icebreaker exercise. I thought my days of icebreakers were over. <laughs> but here's my fun fact. As a boy, my father would take us to Big Five games at the Palestra, and times were different back then. I'd run all around the place, as long as I was back when the game ended. And during one St. Joe's game, I made my way to the court side, where the hawk was flapping his wings. And I eventually, I got up the courage to pluck a feather from the hawk costume. <laughs> I took that feather home, and I actually had it in my bedroom for years. The excitement and the desire to be part of something so special has always stayed with me. And of course, now I have the whole hawk. <laughs> so thank you, and let us take pride, go forth, remind everyone that the hawk will never die.
while the honor guard will retire the colors, and then as all of our honored guests have left the stage and the academic perception has recessed. So the alma mater, remain standing, stay in your seats. We must have the honor guard retiring the colors, and of course you must remain there as we do the reception. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. 